In this video, I'm going to be further chlorinating PDCB to TCB using anhydrous aluminum chloride as the Lewis acid catalyst. It's analogous to the electrophilic aromatic substitution mechanism for the previous two chlorinations, so I'm not going to go into it. Follow the arrows on the chalkboard or watch the previous video for a more in-depth explanation. TCB isn't all that exciting. By itself, it's used as a high temperature solvent for some plastics like polyethylene and polypropylene in uh, gel permeation chromatography. It's largely used as a precursor to dyes and pesticides, and for my purposes, it also will serve as a precursor. I did two runs of this chlorination. The first one, the trial run, did not go well. An oil bath was used to raise the temperature of the PDCB to its melting point so I could bubble chlorine through it. So this type of chlorination is exothermic, and the higher temperature of the reaction mixture relative to the previous chlorinations, coupled with the heat and hydrogen chloride gas released from the reaction, caused back pressure in the system to develop, and the weakest joint in the system happened to be the gas washing bottle containing sulfuric acid. When the tubing attached to the bottle popped off, sulfuric acid sucked back through the delivery tube and sprayed everywhere. None of it got on my skin because I was wearing semi-proper lab clothes, so all it did was make an annoying mess on my brand new cheap Walmart plastic table and splatter the jacket I had on. You'll see the aftermath of this in that the table has residual baking soda used in the cleanup. Here's what I used in run one. I did two additions of chlorine because the first one went poorly and I thought I'd have better luck on the second one, but it went just as poorly. To preserve the anhydrous lab-grade aluminum chloride I have left, I decided to use a 5% molar equivalent in the second run. On to the video. I'm using two of these toilet deodorizers I got from Walmart for like $1.30 each for the second run. I used one for the first run. They have this annoying plastic hangy thing that I need to remove, and it's all in one solid chunk, so I have to crush it up. I do this by wrapping it in packing paper and bashing it with a mallet. I crushed up the remaining chunks using the mortar and pestle. The flask looks a little too full, but once it melts, it'll be around two-thirds full, and that's generally how full you want a flask to be at most. One factor that'll affect the yield is PDCB's tendency to sublime, which you can plainly see. And when I start the chlorine generation, the air that's displaced at first blows a bunch of the PDCB into, and I'm sure, out of the condenser. I remedied the gas washing bottle suckback problem by filling it just under the tube inlet of it with the concentrated sulfuric acid. This didn't seem to have a significant effect on the drying of the chlorine as far as I can tell, but I don't know for sure. Afterwards, I vacuum filtered the reaction mixture to remove any of the insoluble aluminum chloride and PTCB. TCB is a liquid at room temperature, so it passes through the filter. I transferred the filtrate to this beaker along with the DCM washings of the reaction vessel and filter flask and added distilled water to decompose the remaining anhydrous aluminum chloride. Like in the previous video, this caused the organic glare's color to go from dark brown to yellow. I heated the contents of the beaker to evaporate the DCM, adding water as the volume decreased. I then used a separatory funnel to isolate the organic layer, dried it with anhydrous magnesium sulfate, and filtered it directly into the flask I'm about to distill from. A neat piece of glassware I own is this bump trap. It's a simple glass joint with two perpendicularly two-holed circular glass discs fused into it. In the trial run, this distillation foamed a lot, which necessitated the use of a bump trap. PDCB boils at 174 degrees, TCB boils at 213.5 degrees, so I tried to do a short path distillation first with the air-cooled condenser. This didn't separate the compounds sufficiently, so I did an additional fractional distillation with a Vigoro column after this. Uh, the liquid that co-distilled into the beaker was combined with the fraction collected in the brown bottle. What was left in the distillation flask, which is a bunch of brownish crap, was washed with DCM and added to this little beaker, which in turn was added to the combined TCM fractions from runs 1 and 2. 
It might seem counterintuitive to add this back to what I'm about to fractionally distill after I fractionally distilled it, and it is in a way, but I'm adding a higher boiling fraction so I don't distill the mixture to dryness to give a sort of end point so I know when to stop it without losing any of the TCB. During my first attempt, I left the distillation alone for not even five minutes and it foamed enough that the mixture was blown all the way through the apparatus. After all that, here's what I ended up with. A crystal clear, refractive, and dense liquid. Here's a breakdown of what I got. The mishaps for run 1 explain the poor chlorine absorption. In run 2, when basically nothing went wrong, the chlorine absorption was notably higher than obviously run 1, but also than the chlorinations I did in the previous video, where the highest was 24% absorption. I think the elevated reaction temperature is the reason for this. And that's about all I've got. Thanks for watching. If you want to, like, comment, and or subscribe.